Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Yeah, I think you can do better. How are we doing? All right. My name is Tejas, as he said, and one thing about me quickly, I love Cole Turner. Um, it's an inside joke. I'm here to talk to you today about WebAssembly. See, the, 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 I need to move quickly, so if I talk too fast, you let me know after. Um, the, the reason I'm giving this talk um, came out of a conversation I had with a friend recently. Um, and I said, hey, I'm really excited to implement this thing with JavaScript. It's going to be great. And he says, well, sure, um, if WebAssembly doesn't kill it first. And, and, and I thought, well, hmm. I, and, and then I decided maybe we need to talk about WebAssembly a little bit because I don't think it's going to kill JavaScript, but a lot of people have been asking me this and saying this. So let's talk quickly about why WebAssembly, right? Why WebAssembly? Currently, we seem to have this trend of building software for multiple platforms. Um, so it's, it's oftentimes we have an app for the web and an app, in some cases, for native devices. Um, I think of Sketch App as a fine example. It, it exists for Mac, um, but that's kind of the only place you can use it, last time I checked. And so we have this divide. Um, it's a problem of portability. When the web platform was just beginning, um, the JVM, right, Java applets would have been seen as the way forward. Portability was something we've always wanted. Um, I, WebAssembly brings that to us. We can, we can build applications and kind of run them everywhere in the same execution environment. Just think, how cool would it be to run, like, Photoshop, but everywhere, right? like 4K video editing software on your phone, uh, in, in, on a, in a browser, um, on Mac, on Windows, kind of everywhere. WebAssembly will help that. Number two, performance. Um, WebAssembly allows us to bypass kind of the high-level optimizations that happen with JavaScript. See, JavaScript is a language with automatic memory management and garbage collection, and it's really high up, but what if we want to run code closer to the metal? What if we want to do like C? but in the browser, right? Get that, get that performance. WebAssembly allows us to do this. Quickly, what is WebAssembly in a sentence? It is this, I, I, it's a single compile target for the web. What that means is languages that support static typing, things like Rust, um, C++, um, Java even, I, uh, Go, right? These could compile to WebAssembly and be executed in browsers and everywhere. Let's do um, a quick demo of some software that I, I found that really illustrates the power here. All right, so what's happening here is th this is running identical code, except the blue is optimized with WebAssembly. And so each player in this game, the blue and the gray, have 200 milliseconds to make a decision for the best possible move. It's identical code, except one has a feature flag for WebAssembly. It's actually running a precursor of WebAssembly called asm.js from Mozilla, but you can see it's able to calculate faster and eventually win. This speed and performance is the appeal that WebAssembly brings to the web. Um, that was a quick demo of the power we can get. Last question, will it kill JS? Um, no. No, not exactly. See, I think it won't kill JavaScript at all, but I think it might damage the monopoly that JavaScript has on the web platform. I think that's a good thing. Why? Because the web platform is diverse, the web platform is rich that way, and I think we'll add more diversity as more languages compile to WebAssembly. And with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time. This has been an absolute pleasure. <laughs>